Well, hello, and welcome back to the FreeBSD Friday series. I'm Deb Goodcan, and I'm the executive director of the FreeBSD Foundation. So welcome to the third presentation in the series. So as you remember, last week, Roller Angel led you through part one of installing FreeBSD on a virtual machine. So this week, Roller will continue with part two, leading you through setting up a desktop and other useful things on FreeBSD. Now, if you missed last week's talk, you can watch the recording by going to the link we're gonna post in the comments section here. Uh -huh. So before I hand this off to Roller, I'd like to give a quick shout out to our behind the scenes crew. So first, I'd like to thank Ann Dickinson, our marketing director, who has been leading this live series program. And I'd also like to thank Ed Mast, who our director of project development, who is the person behind the streaming and recording. So both are here to help answer questions while Roller is teaching you how to use FreeBSD. So the format for today is, is very similar to last week, and it's like a classroom lecture where Roller will continue to show you how to use FreeBSD, but then you can go off on your own and watch the recording, and then you'll have the ability to pause and rewind. So if you have a question during his talk, please post it in the IRC channel with a queue that precedes the question. And one of us will try to answer your question and we'll allow Roller to continue going since really we only have an hour here. So uh, one thing I wanna remind you of is obviously we're live streaming this, which is pretty cool, but life happens too. So um, sometimes dogs might bark or people you might hear people, so just ignore that. And uh, so anyway, so now I'll hand this off to Roller. Okay, welcome back everybody. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and we'll continue where we left off last time. So last week we were working in this virtual machine here. So we're gonna boot it back up, the one just called FreeBSD. So we'll just click on start. And here it is in the background here. And I'm going to go ahead on mine just for you guys and change it to scaled mode. Let's make it a little bigger. And then you can wait for the countdown or you can hit enter to skip the countdown on this screen. And that'll just boot the default multi user mode. And once this loads up, then we can log in as our regular user. So that would just be the user that you added during the install last week. Okay. So you're just waiting for the login prompt. There it is. So you just type your username and the password that you're using correctly. It's, you have to type it correctly. And then you're in. So the first thing we're going to do, clear the screen. You can either type clear, or you can push Control L. Um, so next we're going to log in as the root user. So you just do sudo dash i for interactive sudo mode. Okay, so we're in as root. Now remember we can push the up arrow to see what what we were typing before. So we'll just go ahead and see if we've got the command from last week in there, but it looks like it didn't uh, stick, which is fine. So we were just typing package install dash, uh, and then we were grabbing xorg. So let's just go ahead and just do xorg real quick. And that'll go to the servers, make sure it's got the latest entries, and then search for XORG. And so, yeah, it says we've already got the most recent package, which is good. So if you want to see a package you have installed, you can just type package info. And you should get a nice list of different packages that you have installed. Um, so what we're going to do next is 
enable the dbus now that we have it. So type sysrc dbus underscore enable equals capital yes. And then press enter. And that should add it to the list of things when the computer starts. Um, next, we're going to use dbus to create. Uh, so if you want to look at what dbus UUID gen does, it basically generates a random ID every time you run it. And so we're going to save one of these IDs as our machine ID. So to do that, you just use this little right caret, and then you just type in the place where you want the output to go. So I want to save it to a file called uh, Etsy machine ID. And then if I check that, so you can use cat, which will concatenate, or it'll just show you the contents of a file. So if we check that, if you notice, um, while I'm typing to check, if you know there's something there and you don't feel like typing it the rest of the way, you can push tab and it'll finish typing the, the rest of the characters for you. So that's always nice to use tab a lot. So we'll press enter and look, that's, that's the machine ID that was saved. So that worked. And now we're just going to start um, dbus. So we'll say service dbus enable or start, I mean. Okay, so now it started. And then we can go in and um, run a desktop. So if you notice our, our first desktop, if, if we do run one right now, it's not going to look too pretty. Um, I'll show you. Well, first, of all, let's leave root because we don't need to be in here at the moment. So you can log out by typing log out, or you can press Control D to become a regular user again. And you'll notice on the, if you don't know who you are, you just type who am I, and it'll tell you, okay, your roller. Okay. So I'm back to being a regular user. Um, so if we were to just type StartX right now, we would get this, not really a desktop environment, but this little, little clock and little X term. So this is, this is not really what, what we want. Um, so we can just type exit to leave that. Um, and to get back, you want to use Control Alt and F1. So Control Alt F1 will bring you back here, and then to stop the program, we'll do Control C. And now I'll show you how to set up a different uh, environment for your desktop that's a little bit uh, newer than that one we just saw, and will let you do other things. So we'll, we need to go back into sudo for this because we need to add a package. And you'll notice that it didn't ask me for a password this time because I had logged in recently using that. So that's kind of nice about sudo is that it remembers up, up to a few minutes, I believe, by default. Okay, so we're going to type package install, and we're going to grab Lumina. because You really don't have to configure it to get this one to run, so it's nice. Um, and just say why, uh, if you want to grab all the packages that are necessary. And then it'll go through real quick and grab what it needs to create a desktop. And after we get this desktop running, I will show you where the instructions are for picking another desktop uh, and what you have to do to get those ones up and running. But it's all saved in the in the handbook, uh, the FreeBSD handbook, which we installed uh, after the installer. So we've actually had the local copy here on our computer that we can check. You can also check the version available at freebsd.org. And then there's a link for documentation and handbook that you can go to. So it's kind of nice to have the local copy in case you're someplace where there's an internet and you want to check the handbook. So there are a, a few extra packages that need to grab. Fetching means it's it's downloading. Um, once all those 175 packages have been fetched, then you'll see it say installing. Installing goes much quicker uh, than grabbing each package.
But it looks like this fetch is going pretty quick as well. Okay, so we're almost there. A few more packages. Awesome, and they're, they seem to be pretty small, so this should be done here in just a second. At least with fetching. And then you'll see how quick it goes through 105 and in, uh, install. It's actually pretty fast. And then this is the install. So we're done, and you'll notice that the sum app came from this, and it's saying you can run start uh, Lumina desktop to run Lumina desktop, um, but they're recommending that you put a line at the end of your XNet RC file. So to do that, you're going to use vi, and you just type dot x and it RC. This is uh, when you type start x, it'll go through this file and run any of the commands that are in there. So we want to just add a command real quick. So you go in to edit the file, and you say exec to, you want it to execute the command start Lumina desktop. Uh, and then we'll just say escape and two capital Zs. Uh, that's my favorite way to save. You can also use the um, colon WQ and enter, and that'll get you out of VI as well. OK, so now that we're out of there, uh, we can just type we can leave here, and we want to do the same thing. Uh, so this is actually the uh, X and RC that we'll be using. The one that's from, if you check who am I, since we just logged out of root, you want to be your regular user and then edit their X and it RC file, because this is what you're, you're going to be regularly logging in as yourself and then typing start X. So we want to go in there and type exec start Lumina desktop, and then escape. And I'll show you the other one. So you hit escape first to start typing, and then you can do colon WQ, and that'll save as well. OK, so now that we're saved up, we can do control L to clear the screen, or you can just type clear. And then we just want to say start X to start a desktop, and we should see a desktop appear after this. Check it out. So oh, there it is. And that's all it took to get our, our desktop up. Um, next, we want to. Um, so I'm, I'm going to actually exit now uh, this full screen mode that I'm in. Um, the easiest way for me is to shut it down real quick and come back. Um, there's a hot key that you can learn inside of. Um, uh, when you're using when you're using VirtualBox, it'll tell you, and it usually tells you right in the beginning what the hotkey is. So it's usually ho the host key, and then um, which in this case mine's right control. So you push the host key, and then I believe it's H. Um, one moment. There we go. So that's just telling you uh, what this is just VirtualBox. So I'm just going to try and get my VirtualBox to go back to not full screen mode, which is, which one is it? Sorry, I don't remember which key it is for VirtualBox. So I'm just going to power up the machine real quick and see if I can load it a different way. Um, or we can just check here real fast. 
but basically if you're loading it in in the scaled mode it's just going to look a little bit different um now that we have the desktop running we don't really need the scaled mode because it'll fill the screen anyways so it's okay we can go on with the scaled mode but just so you know you don't have to use scaled mode um, to get your desktop working I'm just going to get back in here. Okay, my machine should be up any second now. So this is how you're going to log in and, and get to your desktop regularly. So you're just going to come to the login screen, type your name and your password, and then start X as the first command and you should have a desktop great okay so that's um if you're having this problem where your mouse isn't moving like i am um we can try a few a few different things for that so because when i'm clicking here my mouse just isn't moving um, so we can try enabling the mouse, um, which would be, so I'm just going to do, I'm going to go back and restart the computer because my mouse isn't working. So I just did that by doing um, the host key, which is con right control and then H, and that told the to halt the machine. So the machine shut down. Let's start it back up. And this time before we type start X, we'll go in and we'll add uh, the mouse, mouse D, which is like a mouse demon. It, which should help with the mouse um, inside of VirtualBox. And also we just need to double check that we have the VirtualBox guest editions installed. And I'll show you how, if you don't remember the name of the command, you can actually run a search and it'll show you uh, what the VirtualBox guest editions package is called. Okay, we we'll log back in. This time we're gonna go into sudo and type in our password. And then we're just gonna say package search VirtualBox. And that'll show you all the packages that have the word VirtualBox in it. And we're just looking for the, see it says VirtualBox OSC editions. So we just want to make sure we have that. So and we'll just make sure you type package and install for that. Okay. So we want to make sure we have, which I believe we installed last week, but Okay, so that's already there. So just as long as that's already there, we can go in and just say sysrc mouse d enable equals yes. And then either you can reboot the machine to make now that it's enabled it and it'll start that service up, or you can try to find the service, which should be service mouse d start. That's what it should be called, I believe. Yeah. So let's exit out of here. And let's try that again and see if we get our mouse. There we go. Okay, so once you have your mouse working, um, you can come down here and check some applications. There's not really much in here by default, um, which is good. If you right click, you can get the terminal, the default terminal to come up real quickly. Um, you can notice this, this one's not that great looking. So if you'd like to change to a different one, um, I'll show you how to do that. So we're gonna log in as, as root again inside this show. And here's some of the packages that we're gonna install. So say package install, we're gonna grab Firefox. And then the other shell that I use is called Secura. So you just say you want Firefox and Secura. And if you don't wanna keep saying yes every time, uh, when you install a package, you can put a little dash Y here at the end of flag, and it'll just say, if, if asked, say yes, basically. 
So that will just install both those packages real quick. And then I'll show you how we can change the default in here. Um, and to make this, uh, this desktop look a little bit nicer, you can always come in here and go into um, all desktop settings under preferences, all desktop settings. And then go to theme right here under appearance. And then you can come over here to icons and pick a pick a color of icon that, that you want. So you notice that those change change black. And then you can also change over here in this window manager. So I just clicked right here under uh, window manager. Sorry. Right here. So under appearance, there's window manager. And then you can pick one from this list. There's a whole bunch of them. Um, you can just see what they look like by clicking save. So this one, this looks a little bit better. Um, yeah. And you can just go through here and see what other settings there are. Um, but we'll just stick with those for now. You can even change the wallpaper. Um, you can have it pick like a, a, a solid color if you want, like a red. Just save there. Then you just get this nice red background. Okay. So it looks like I installed the packages. So to make Sakura the, the default when you click on terminal. So if you right click and hit terminal, it just opens up X term. If you want to change that, you go to all desktop settings. And under um, desktop defaults applications, you would just change it right here. So you'd say my virtual terminal, I want it to be secure instead of Xterm. And then my web browser, uh, I want it to be Firefox. And you can also set, if you use um, email clients like Gmail and Yahoo, and I think there's a few other that um, you can always just change this if it doesn't work, but Gmail works pretty good with this. Um, you can set your email client as the web browser within Firefox, and it'll, if you ever click on one of those email links that says dot, you know, mail to in a link or something like that, it'll actually just open up your web browser email client. So that's always nice. Okay, so now if you right click on your desktop and hit terminal, this is what Secure looks like. A little bit different, but it's a bit nicer. Okay, so let's open up Firefox and I'll show you where the handbook is that we installed earlier. So here's Firefox. And it's going to have these few default screens, so we can just cancel out of them and start fresh. And you can always remove these sections. Uh, to get them off of your your home page if you don't like them. Okay, so let's go to, this is how you open a file that's already on your computer. You say file, colon, and then three slashes, and then you start type, typing the location. So it's in user, local, share, doc, FreeBSD, handbook, and then it's index.html. So if you go to that exact location, there should be an index file there. And just to verify before I go, I'll, I'll show you real, real quick that if um, if you type ls and then you start typing, you can say slash user and then you know there's usr in there, so you just hit tab and that'll fill it out for you. Then local push tab share tab doc tab three tab. And then the, if you notice that this time it didn't type out FreeBSD because there's a couple other things that have free at the beginning, but it, it but it, it at least lists them right here for you. So you just if you just push B and then tab, it'll type FreeBSD. Then H and then tab, it should type Handbook. Cool. And then index. So that's that's the location where the file is. And if you just put a type ls on that, it would just show that that actually isn't there. Okay. But that saves you from having to type ls over and over again to see what's in a directory. Tab is really nice. Okay, so here's the handbook. And to notice in the handbook, it has these different setups. So you have installing, 
and then some basics, and then the exit window system. So this is where we'd want to go to see what other type of uh, desktop environments are available. So if you click on 5.7 desktop environments, you can see that there's GNOME, and it just tells you you just package install GNOME 3. Uh, and we're not doing any of these. Um, I'm showing you how to use package, which is in the instructions, you can just install from package. Uh, if you can ignore the parts where it says build from ports, and then it does things like this, because we're not doing that. So to do GNOME, you would just type package install GNOME 3, uh, and then follow these little bit of instructions. It just wants you to edit one file. So just, you just use VI to edit that file, and then add these lines like it asks. And this one's telling you to edit etsyrc.conf. Well, earlier when, when we typed, um, we wanted to enable mouse D, right? So we typed, we typed sysrc. What that did was sysrc, this is a pretty common task to go and edit something in etsyrc.conf. So I'll show you what's in there. Um, it's a pretty common task to come in here and edit something. So you'll notice mouse D showed up here because sysrc knows that that's what you wanted to do is just add one line to a file. So instead of having to go and edit one line on a file, you just type, you just type. So those two commands, you'd actually just say sysrc uh, dbus enable equals yes. And then you would say sysrc how the enable equals yes. And you don't have to do the uh, quotes with sysrc. You can just type it like that. So that, that just makes it a little simpler whenever you notice this in, in, in instructions telling you to edit the etsyrc.com like this with little quotes. You could just use sysrc. Um, and then you'll see this one wants you to type, uh, it wants you to add this line to etsyrc.com as well. And then it tells you a little bit extra like what to put in your x in it, RC. So, that's that's all you would add is this is basically just telling you you'd go into your X in it RC file and you'd add exec use your local bin gnome session. Um, so if we look at our X in it RC, it should just have that one line that we put in there earlier. So you just say cat dot X in it RC and it still has this line. So you would just replace this part with uh, this part. And that's how you'd get your gnome up and running. And then it's also telling you um, another way of if you're using XDM as your display manager. Okay, so then it, it talks about KDE. So it's just telling you that you can package install KDE and then do the same thing. Go and edit this one file and enable these two services. And then they want, they're telling you something about KDE specifically that you might need to change. And then they show you down here, instead of using X in it RC, they use this X session file. So basically you would, you're, you're, when you see echo and then, and then some quotes and then echo is, it's really just gonna take that, take the contents of what's right here and put it, that's what this means, put it into this file. This little tilde is actually talking about your home directory. So that means the same thing as slash home slash your name so you you can see there's home roller desktop there's home roller um if you want to see what's in there you just say ls dash la and that'll show everything um slash home slash roller so let's see what's in there so this is just a nice listing of everything that's in this file we have the xnet rc file we've got uh, the history file for the commands we've typed. Uh, so it, and then this is the configuration for our shell, which we're using just the defaults right now. So if you if you push up to check ls, so if I didn't push put any flags on ls, we would just get in just the desktop would show up because the, by default anything with a dot in front of its name um, is hidden. So just, just remember to show hidden files, you just want to use that dash LA. 
when you're using LS to see everything that's in, in a folder. Uh, and then we'll just show you, here's another one. Oops, sorry about that. Um, so we had, we scroll down here to 5.7.3 XFCE. So this one's just package install XFCE and we're not building a port, so we can skip that part. And then we could just do sysrc dbus enable equals yes without the quotes. And I'll do the same thing as editing that one file. And then this one wants you to go in and edit your x init rc. And then it's, it's just showing you an alternate method if you're using a, a display manager. OK. So those, that's what's good about the handbook is, is it shows you all these different options with tips on how to get each thing up and running. So I'll show you that. All right, next we can move on to uh, how to get better at editing files. Um, so VI by, by itself is, is nice, but there's actually something called Vim, uh, VI improved, and it comes with a thing called Vim Tutor, which makes it nice when you're trying to uh, learn how to do editing of files for the first time on, on a Unix-like operating system. So we'll go into Studio and we'll, we'll get this new package. And we're just going to say package install dash y uh, vim. So that's vi improved. So it'll go real quick and grab that. And then I'll show you what we can do with this. Because Vim Tutor is great. I, I, I like to do it when I'm uh, got some downtime or, or even when I'm on an airplane. It's nice just to practice. Because uh, you don't need internet for uh, for this tutor program. Okay, so we're going to come out of here. I just type in log out. Uh, or you can type exit. Or you can just press control D. So if you just type Vim by, by itself, you'll get the text editor. And you press I to start editing, and then you can uh, start typing stuff. And if you want to quit without saving, you can just do escape, and then you do colon Q and an exclamation point to say I quit, and then I really want to quit. Even though I edited something, it's okay, you can throw it away. So that's how you get out. Uh, the tutor is right here. You just type Vim tutor, all one word. And you'll see, welcome to the Vim Tutor. And now it tells you at the very, if you look the very last uh, paragraph says, now make sure that your caps lock key is not on and press the J key enough times. So you just keep holding down the J key and that goes down, down, down. And then it starts to tell you, here's the up, here's the down, here's left, here's right. And it starts to explain to you how to use Vim by making you use Vim to read the, the, the tutorial. And then it's cool because it'll go through different lessons like like um, go through and, and spell check this and it'll teach you, you know, press X to delete a character. So you would just go up to the the C cow here and just push X over that to delete that character and X. So it just wants you to uh, correct this file and then you can start learning how to use it by editing a file that doesn't matter uh, on your system, which is a great way to learn. Because uh, once you're done with this tutor, you'll you'll really understand how to edit files and it won't be a pain. So I'm just gonna quit out of here with the exclamation since I did make some edits, but see if I try and quit without the exclamation point, it'll say you, you made some changes and you didn't write. Add exclamation point if that's really what you want to do. So I, I do want to quit. So quit with exclamation point, and then it lets me leave. OK, so that's, uh, that's how you get over Vim. Uh, and if you'll notice, if you just install Vim by itself, it has this gvim. This is like a Vim in a little box here instead of in your terminal. So you can always try that, too, if you're in your desktop mode. That way, you can see sort of what some of the commands are. It'll tell you right here. If you just type colon and then that word, see save is right, save and exit is right and quit. 
and different things. So th this will just remind you uh, how how to get around. Um, and copy. So this is something that, that's kind of neat. Um, so if you notice that it, it's telling you press the quotes, the plus key, and then Y. So if you wanted to copy something that was coming out of here, so let's just cat um, uh, a file so we can get some text. So let's say we wanted to share our um, machine ID, but we didn't want to type this whole thing out. So to to copy and and uh, in Sakura, you can actually just highlight with your mouse and, and do what you normally would and just do copy, which is that's why I like Sakura. It's kind of nice like that. But if if you weren't able to use your mouse to copy, you can just do, if you were actually in the file. So what you would do is you would use V to select, and then you just use your over arrows to pick what, what you want to select. Um, once you have it all selected, you, then you would just do the quotes, the plus, and then uh, Y. Y is for you to yank it. And then that should yank it to your clipboard. And now if we were to come to a program like this and try and paste, you'll see that it, it comes out. So that, that's how you can copy from a, a command line. Uh, and if you're actually using Vim to do some editing and you want to copy something out of a configuration file, or if you want to paste something out of a configuration file, it's that's what's nice about GVM is you can get the commands that you need to type um, just over here on the side. Okay, like that, that. And we don't need to be in here, so let's quit out of here. Great. So now that you've got the basics on that, um, we'll go and, and make sure that we can actually get online. So the first thing we're going to check here is, yeah, sure, it just uses my default browser. We already set that up but in uh, Lumina, but it's okay. We can just say yes to that. So we'll just go to freebsd.org and this should, since we're on the internet, this should go out and load the website. And there it is. So we're on the, the main website and here as well as the handbook is also right here. This is a good, this is also a good place that you can come and read the handbook and get the hang of of doing different things. So if you notice here, common tasks, it'll tell you here's some things that you might want to use for browsers or for productivity or viewing documents or keeping track of your finances. So that's pretty cool. Um, you know, about how to do printing if you're plugged in, if you're using this on a regular uh, machine and you want, you have a printer that you want to plug into it. Um, and there, there's all kinds of different uh, things in here, um, but I thought I'd just show you at least getting started, and then some of the some of the common things that, that you'd want to do, which is like change your desktop environment, and then and, you know install different browsers. So if you come here to browsers, there should be a list of you know I always usually show people Firefox, which is pretty simple, but there's other ones. There's one called Conquer, um, Chrome. We can, it's called Chromium, it's the open source one. So I can show you that one real quick. It's, it looks pretty much exactly like Chrome. So we would just say package install Chromium, just like it says. Okay, so that'll, Chrome it looks like it's, it's kind of big, so it's just taking a second to install. But once this is done, then we should have a new web browser. Uh, and this, this list will actually just update automatically. Um, the list of, in the network section is where you're gonna find a pop-up. So we'll just wait a second. And just remember the fetching usually takes longer than the installing.
All right, so let's go find it. Come in here. There it is. Um, and so in, in Lumina, you can right click and add to favorites, but you can also add to this thing called the, the quick launch, which just puts it down here. If you just want to click on uh, little icons down here. Okay, and you'll notice this, this looks pretty much exactly like Chrome. And then you can just sign in like you normally would if you want to do the syncing um, or or if you just want to use like a regular um, web browser, you can just uh, type in your website there and it'll load up like normal. So that's always nice to have another option in case um, you just want to see it. Maybe you're using like a more up, like the web app you're using wants you to use Chrome, then go ahead and try it in, in Chromium. And that'll give you a pretty good chance of getting something to work. Um, that's what you're going for. And then over here uh, in productivity, it just starts to tell you about different different um, programs that, that you can use, like a Word. This one's kind of like Word. This one lets you edit pictures. So you just package and install GIMP, and then you've got something that's kind of like Photoshop. Uh, there's a lot of um, tutorials online about that. Um, this open office is nice to have. But there's also one called LibreOffice, which is also nice and works great. Um, so that, that's always good um, to have if you need to have Office-like uh, tools, uh, you know, presentation, for doing presentations and, and editing files and things like that. And then um, if you want to do PDFs, this one's just showing you there's a few. Uh, there's one called XPDF or GV. It's also lets you do PDFs. And then um, EPDF view. Ocular, I've used this one before. This one's on uh, on KDE. This one's pretty nice. But just remember, if you install stuff that was made for KDE, it's probably going to come with a lot of extra packages. Um, so you might you might end up looking at, at your package uh, info output and notice that it's getting pretty pretty long. That's usually just uh, what'll happen if you're once you start installing packages, it'll show you everything, every package that, that you've installed, plus all the dependencies. So this list can start to get pretty long after a while. Um, so we'll actually just get out of being root, and I'll show you a few more tricks before we get out here. So if you want to modify your uh, shell, you can check out the file called C D S H R C. Uh, it's already it already has some some defaults that are in here by default. So basically, it's saying if you push if you push H, then it's going to type history twenty five. So let's go see what history twenty five does. So you can always just open a new tab here. So if you just typed history, it would show you everything. I think history with a number afterwards, like twenty five, will show you the first twenty five most likely. So let's try history two and see if we just get two. Yeah. So it, history twenty five will show you the most recent twenty five commands. Uh, so that that's basically what it's telling you is that there's already a default. So if you were just to push H, you'll notice that H is an alias, and that's how you, this is how you set up aliases. So if you want to set up your own alias, you would just type the word alias, what you want to be typed, and then over here you would just type it the actual command. So that's kind of nice um, to be able to set up aliases. So that, that's one thing that, that you can do in this file, .cshrc in your home directory is, is create aliases. Um, this one's showing you how to set environment variables. So to check your environment variables, you just type env, and it'll show you this whole list of different things that are set up already. Um, and this one's just showing you that it's set up a couple more. So it's setting the editor as VI. We can change that now that we have Vim. So we can just come here, put an M there. And now whenever something needs an editor, uh, by default, it'll open up Vim instead of VI. And the pager we're using is less, which is fine. And then this is telling you how to set up the prompt. Um, right now, it's just showing my my 
if we look at a normal prompt, you'll see it's showing my name and then an at sign, and then it says free BSD. So let's see what this. So percent N is stands for name, then there's the at sign, and percent lowercase m, that stands for the name of the machine that you're on. And you'll notice that that's coming out as FreeBSD. And then it's a colon and a tilde character. So we're seeing a colon, and then we're seeing percent tilde or percent hashtag. So that's just telling it to, um, to show the percent this. Uh, Usually what the tilde is doing is if you were to change into your a directory, yeah, so it'll show tilde if you're in your home directory, but if you're just in a different directory, like the actual home directory, but not your specific home directory. See, now I can change into roller, and it goes back to tilde, because if you type PWD, that just stands for print working directory, and it's just showing you, okay, we're in our user home roller folder. Um, and you'll notice that slash home and slash user home equate to the same thing because uh, there's probably a link. But that's another thing we can get into uh, later. But that's that's some of the basics on how to get around. And since I modified this uh, value here, I'm just going to save this file. So remember, you just push escape and then colon WQ. So I'm going to write the file, but I don't just want to write. I want to quit them. So right and then quit. And now it's written. And now if I leave, remember after you make changes to your uh, to your terminal, you usually want to close it and come back. Uh, and then any changes that I made would start sh to show up here. So that's like it, that's how you can make modifications. Is is there's the CSHRC file. So just remember. It's there, and if you forget, you can always do ls-la in your home directory to see what files are in here. And this is what the file that we were just editing. So that just controls your shell. Um, and we're using tcsh, but um, it's backwards compatible with csh. So that's why this, uh, you can make your own .tcshrc file if you want to start over, but this actually has some pretty good um, notes in it. And to get you started, so might might as well just build off of that one instead of making our own um, and branching off. Okay, so I think that's all we're going to show you for today. Is it's just how you got in, and I'll show you now how you can leave. So remember, uh, if you didn't add yourself to the operator group, so you wouldn't have restart and power off available to you here. And just to double check, if you want to check what groups you're in, you should be able to type PW group show and then the name of the uh, the name of the group. So we just want to see if we were an operator. And these are the people that are in operator. So we're in there, which is good. So that, that's how you check if you're in a group. And then you can just do man PW if you want to know more about that command and all the different things that uh, you can do. Uh, there's quite a bit, a few different things you can do with this uh, utility, like add people to groups or remove them from groups or check groups or add users. There's a, it, it does a bunch of different stuff. So this is a good, uh, reading the manual page is good to figure out more about that. Um, yeah, and so to leave, you would just say leave and then log out or you can just do power off. If you just log out, it'll bring you actually back to where we type start X. So now we're, now we're just back here. So if, if we want to turn off the computer from here, you'd have to actually type the command uh, shut down, uh, which you can read more about just typing man shut down. And it'll tell you a little bit about it. Um, but we're gonna, just gonna type, uh, to, we'll see if this works without being pseudo because we're in the operator group. So we'll say shut down. We want to do the dash P for power off and then the time that we want to shut down is now. So that whole command was shut down and then space dash P space now. And that turned the computer off. So now that we've got to this point, um, remember I showed you earlier that you can clone these machines. You can also save 
their state. So you can always right click on them and and make a uh, make a snapshot. So uh, let me see where the snapshot settings are. Well, cloning is probably your best bet for now, but you can learn more about about how this works. Um, there are ways to make uh, saves at any point and then go back to them. Um, but cloning is, is also, I mean, it's pretty simple. It just makes you a copy of the machine and then you're ready to go next time. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what I'll show you for today. And thank you for joining. Well, thank you, Roller. That was really good. I um, so one thing I picked up on was um, I never knew there was the Vim tutorial. So that sounds like fun for, especially for, I mean, VI is so old, and um, I know it sort of dates me, but I mean that's what I learned when I was in college and back when we used Unix. And so I forget a lot. Um, you know, I have things ingrained in my my brain, but I'll forget commands, and so I'm always looking them up. So, uh, so that's great. So, um, I really want to thank you for the time you spent the last two weeks with us and sharing your knowledge with everyone. And um, and hopefully, actually, we might continue having another, you know, continuation of this with maybe some gels and some of the other things that you did at scale. So, um, so, so anyway, to the attendees, I just want to remind you that you could continue posting questions here and um, and remember that we'll have the recording of this talk posted later in our YouTube channel. And I believe the link is, is posted in the uh, question channel here. So next week, uh, Kirk McCusick will join us and he'll talk about the history of the BSD fast file system and it's in cooperation with the Unix uh, or I'm sorry, the, with the Usenix Association. So thank you, everyone, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. So